the book of Psalms chapter 31, and we'll begin with verse 1. This is a psalm of David. He said, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privately for me. For thou art my strength. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in adversities, and hast not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. Mine eye is consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity and my bones are consumed. I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors and a fear to mine acquaintance. They that did see me without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mind. I am like a broken vessel. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy's sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed. Let them that be silent and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Oh, how great is thy goodness! which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off, for for I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplications when I cried unto thee. O love the Lord, all ye his saints. For the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. God got to talking to me. We'll pray again here before you seated. Got to dealing with me. Actually, I'll tell you where I started over in Psalms chapter 1. I felt like the Lord was dealing with me about the blessed man, the blessed man, the blessed man. And I'm still whittling on that. I'm going to preach that down the road somewhere. But in the process of looking at that, God led me over to Psalm 31 not too many days ago. And I I feel like preaching this to us here tonight. I want to preach on the blessed life. The blessed life. Amen. I'm living a blessed life. Praise God. I'm glad for it, ain't you? I don't have anything to be ashamed of with God. Hallelujah. This is a blessed way. Would you lift your hands and pray and ask the Lord to talk to us? Amen. Praise God. Why don't you look at somebody and tell them, I am blessed. I am blessed. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. 
I, uh, you know, I see these little things on the back of automobiles a lot. And Sister Tig bought her one of them uh, souped up machines and she's putting stickers on things and cutting out vinyl things and doing this, that, and the other, her little crafts that she likes to do. And, and uh, she put something on the back of our Jeep. She put Christ life on the back of the Jeep. And especially when we come here in Florida uh, for several years now, we've been seeing something called salt life. Salt Life. I'm assuming it's some kind of outdoor uh, store or some kind of outdoor group, you know. I've seen hats and T-shirts and all kind of different things. And I'm assuming it's people that like the ocean. They like the salt water. And they're living the salt life. Hallelujah. And uh, so I felt like God got to dealing with me about the blessed life. Amen. I want to live the blessed life. That's the life that I'm after. Amen. And I, I, when I begin to ponder that, begin to pray about it, begin to consider it, does that mean that I'm living a life that has no troubles? Does, does it, does, because I'm blessed, because I'm living for Christ, because Christ is blessing my life, does that mean I'm living a stress-free, a stress-free existence? Absolutely not. Does it mean that my life never has any disappointments? That there's no worries, no cares, amen, from day to day? Absolutely not. Praise God. I face troubles just like the person in the world that doesn't even know Christ. I have worry that comes around from time to time. And I'm telling you, if you're trying to press your way into heaven, this is a pressing way. And you know that you're going to face stress from time to time. Amen. And uh, surely you that have lived any length of time at all understand uh, that it's a life that is indeed filled with letdown and disappointment. Hallelujah. Uh, but because that we have these troubles and trials and times of testing and places of worry and stress and disappointment, that does not in any way mean that we cannot live the blessed life. Hallelujah. And I was reading through this. I saw uh, David, King David, talking about things in this psalm. In this song, it seemed like it. there's so many different sides to what he was talking about. Uh, but if we could just boil it down, just to a couple of different sides I saw him in the bright rays of God's countenance I saw bright glorious rays of, of sunshine in the testimony as David was singing his song in Psalms chapter 31 but not only did I see hope and help and healing and mercy and grace I'll tell you something else I got a glimpse of while the psalmist was singing his song I saw some dark gloomy clouds I saw some long shadowy valleys that the psalmist was walking through amen times of disappointment amen times of betrayal amen he talked about uh, amen nets and lying vanities and lying lips all in this same psalm amen and so uh, amen God wanted me to understand when he led me to this psalm no doubt amen he wanted me to get a handle on this it's in circumstances Circumstances like David was facing in Psalms chapter 31 that God can prove his faithfulness to the child of God. It's in times like David was facing uh, these nets, these lying vanities, these lying lips, these people that had betrayed him and laid a snare for him and tangled him up in the nets of their deceit. It's in circumstances like these that God can show us that his Grace is sufficient. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. When I begin to look at this, God began to show me a pattern. I'd like to share it with you here tonight. Amen. I felt like God is helping me here and uh, it's just too good to keep to myself. Hallelujah. I want to tell somebody else about it. You know what I seen? Uh, amen. In the psalmist as he threw his head back and he began to sing his song. Uh, amen. I saw confidence in God. Uh, Amen. In the very first verse, did you hear what he said? In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Hallelujah. Oh, that's great confidence. He's going to talk to us about worry. He's going to talk to us about struggle and stress. And he's going to talk to us about what life is like and how we are vexed on every side sometimes. Amen. But he began his song. Amen. By rehearsing in the ears of God. 
You're the one I'm trusting. You're the one I'm putting my confidence in. You're the one I'm depending on. Him the O oh Lord, do I put my trust. Hallelujah. How many knows he'll do to trust? Praise God. Amen. Listen, I'm not putting my trust in the church. I'm glad I'm a part of it. But there's folks in the church that'll let you down. There's folks in the church that'll betray you. There's folks in the church that's not living where they ought to be with God. And so my confidence is much higher than the church. I'm not just putting all my confidence in the preacher. Come on now. Preachers are human. They can stumble. They can falter. Praise God. They can get sidetracked. I'm putting my hope and my confidence in a much higher power than a preacher man. Come on here. I'm telling you, my confidence is in God. That's what David said. David said, I can make it through the storms, through the struggles, through the calamities of life as long as my trust is in God. Hallelujah. Oh, wave your hand and praise the Lord here, will you? Oh, hallelujah. Maybe Solomon, his son, was drawn from what David said in Psalms 31 and 1 when he wrote Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. He said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In verse 6 he said, In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Hallelujah. He'll do to trust. Praise God. The blessed life must have its source in God. Hallelujah. Listen, you, you've got to trust God. Amen. You can't trust your job. You can't trust the stock market. You can't trust American society. You can't trust the bank. You can't trust the doctor. You can't trust the lawyer. Come on. You can't even trust the judge to make righteous judgments. i tell you who you can trust. You can put your trust in God. He'll never fail you. He'll never let you down. He'll never drop you. Praise God. He'll do the trust hallelujah confidence praise God you know what I'd like to see a revival of among the people of God I'd like to see a people that has great confidence that God is able to do anything but fail that God can heal that God can deliver that God can set free that God can strengthen God can unite God can put back together again praise God hey I want to have confidence in God, if I'm going to be blessed, my hope, my confidence must be in God. Hallelujah. Hey Amen. Did you know we don't even begin to live until we start trusting in Him? John said it like this in John 3 and 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Did you hear what John said he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life glory to God amen I want you to understand something I'm living eternal life right now I'm living everlasting life right now praise God one day this old body's going to lay down but there's a spirit man living inside of me that's going to live forever praise God amen I'm living life more abundantly uh, right now uh, in the middle of the storm uh, in the middle of the circumstances uh, in the middle of the pain uh, in the middle of the heartbreak uh, praise God uh, he gave me life uh, and that life more abundantly hallelujah confident praise God amen did you know to receive Jesus Christ by faith amen amen We talk about salvation being saved, trusting Him for our salvation. I'm going to tell you something. To receive by faith the life of Christ is to receive the right of sonship. Come on, say amen to me. You uh, look right up here at me. You're not looking at the Son of God, 
but you are sure enough looking at a son of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm not, listen, I'm not saying I'm a little God. I'm not a little Jesus. That's not what I'm uh, pretending here tonight to propagate or advocate. Amen. But I have the life of Christ inside of me. It's in him that I live and move and have my being. My life is hid with God in Christ. Hid in God with Christ. Praise God. Amen. The Bible said, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name praise God what great confidence when hell comes to trouble your mind you ought to shout right down in the mouth of hell I'm a child of God I'm washed in the blood I'm born again praise God when worry and stress and calamity and trouble amen threaten to affect your walk with God you ought to wave your hands and holler hallelujah I'm saved I'm born again my name's written in the book hallelujah woo hallelujah confident you don't have to drag around wondering if you're going to make it you can have confidence praise God amen in thee oh Lord do I put my trust not only did I see confidence is necessary for the blessed life commitment is necessary if I'm going to live the blessed life Sister Smith I'm going to have to be committed to God in verse 5 did you hear what the psalmist said he said into thine hand I commit my spirit thou hast redeemed me O Lord God of truth Amen, I'll tell you something. The redeemed spirit must be totally committed to God. Amen, the redeemed must be committed to the redeemer. Hallelujah. Amen, he didn't save us. Amen, just put us back in sin. He didn't set us free so we could become entangled again with the yoke of bondage. But he delivered us so we could put our commitment in him, praise God, so we could serve him with all that is within us. You know what he done? He bought us. He purchased us. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6 and 20, ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Praise God. The life of faith is a life of continual and unreserved commitment and surrender to God. Amen. Listen to what he said. I marked it so I wouldn't forget it. He said it in verse 2. He said it in verse 3. He said it in verse 4. He said, Bow down thine ear and deliver me speedily. Pull me out of the net. Praise God. Amen. He was in a place of trouble, conflict, a place of struggle, a place of calamity and trial. Bow down thine ear. Amen. He started out, amen, with great confidence. I'm going to trust you, Lord. I've put my trust in thee, O Lord. And then he approaches God with his commitment. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me. Oh, Lord God of truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Now he's in a place where he's so low. He's wondering if his prayers is reaching heaven. And he said, listen to me, God. Bow your ear down to me. Deliver me speedily. I'm tired of being in this place. Hurry up and send me a deliverance. Come on and say amen to me, church. Don't try to sit there looking all pious like you've never prayed that way. Lord, I need help and I need it right now. Hallelujah. We don't demand God to do anything but we petition Him. Hallelujah. And we remind Him praise God of our commitment to Him in the way that we live our life. Did you hear what He said? He said, God, you are my strong rock. You are my house of defense. You are my rock. You are my fortress. Hallelujah. I'm committed to you. Strong rock. 
I'm running to you, house of defense. I'm leaning on you, rock and fortress. Praise God. I'm telling you, if you commit to him, he'll help you. Amen. Don't hold back anything. Make a complete, unreserved surrender to all that you are or ever shall be. And watch the hand of God help you to live the blessed life. The blessed life. Praise God. Self-sacrifice in the will of God is a very different thing from self-sacrifice made outside of the will of God. When we talk about commitment, being committed to God, we need to understand that our greatest commitment should be revealed to the world through our greatest times of stress and calamity and trial and trouble. Uh, one of the writers in the New Testament, I believe it was Peter, that exhorted us to be ready always to give every man an answer of the hope that is within us. Uh, we are the people of hope. Come on, say amen. We're going to celebrate Easter Sunday here for long, just a few weeks. We are the Easter people. Hallelujah. We're the resurrection people. Can you say amen? We're not serving an idol. We're not serving a dead God. Our God, listen, his bones ain't in a cemetery in Jerusalem. He got up from the dead. Can you shout amen? He'll do to commit to. I said he'll do to commit to. Listen, when we're committed to him, then we can face the struggles of life. Did you hear Job? Uh, the last two Sundays in that church up there in Alabama, that they, they taught out of the book of Job in Sunday. Sunday school, amen. And uh, the last two Sundays, I marveled all over again. Uh, we've talked about Job and preached about Job, uh, but I saw a life of commitment. Hallelujah. Job said it like this Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Praise God. Uh, that's commitment, brother. Uh, I said, That's commitment. I feel the Holy Ghost here. Uh, Job said, uh, He knows uh, the way that I take, uh, and when he uh, has tried me I shall come forth as gold praise God hallelujah praise God when his wife tried to get him to curse God and die he said you talk like a foolish woman one songwriter said put the words in Job's mouth he ain't never done me nothing but good hallelujah he's only blessed me he's only helped me he's only protected me he's only kept me praise God I'm telling you Job is a picture of commitment through the struggles of life. And if he made it without the blood of Jesus, how much more should you and I be examples of commitment living up under the blood of Jesus? We've got a great something that Job didn't have. huh? We've got the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the blessed life. Praise God. I'm not going to keep you long. I saw it. I saw the psalmist's confession. Amen. He said in verses 9 through 12, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My strength faileth. I am forgotten as a dead man. I am like a broken vessel. Hallelujah. Amen. If we're going to get anywhere with God... Not only must we, amen, be committed to him, amen, we've got to confess before him our need in truth. We've got to come before him uh, in transparency and with an honest heart. Come on now. Huh? God wants us to realize he is our everything and without him we are nothing. Come on, say amen. Oh, I got to thinking about this. Listen, I wrote this down. I didn't want to forget it. It's no strange thing. Now some of you are going to draw up on me right here. I'm going to preach to us. It's not a strange thing for a man to feel nothing but weakness and worthlessness after he has completely and wholly given 
given himself over to the will of God. Come on now. I'm telling you, a lot of times sitting out there looking up here, you see a big strong preacher screaming and hollering about faith and walking right and living right. Amen. But don't forget, before we get up here, we sit out there where you sit. Come on and help me. And just because we're up here doesn't exempt us from the struggles and the stresses and the troubles and the problems of life. Come on now. I'm telling you, don't think when you commit everything to Christ that he's going to put an S on your chest and you're going to be faster than a speeding bullet. Come on now. Don't think you're going to leap with hinds feet in high places from mountaintop to mountaintop. For every two mountaintops, there's at least one valley that you're going to have to go through. Come on, say amen. Hey, and it's in those times when you feel weakness. Praise God, the writer said, amen, his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Hallelujah. When I'm weak, that's when he gets strong. i tell you what he wants. He don't want me to put on. He don't want me to pretend in his presence. He wants me to be transparent and confess my need before him. I, uh, I've said it here before. I've probably said it so many times you're tired of hearing it. <coughs> it's a, uh, I raised two boys and uh, some of y'all are raising boys. Sister Pearlie and her husband, they're raising boys. And I tell you, as a, as a man, brother, it was always a great joy for them boys to come to me and say, Daddy, I need your help. Huh? If it's putting the chain back on the bicycle or uh, patching the inner tube huh? or figuring out how to save money or what to spend it on, what not to spend it on, whatever it is that life hands them, it's always a great joy for them to come. Now, when they got about 15 years old, they all, they all of a sudden knew everything there was about everything. And there was a little space of time there. They didn't call on me very much. They had it all figured out. Come on now. But now the, the baby's 25 and the oldest boy's 28. And they're calling on me again. Huh? They, they, huh? These old gray hairs, they, they finally figured out I didn't walk down the path they walking down. I'm on my way back. Hallelujah. I done been there. Huh? And uh, they're calling on me again, and it makes me swell up on the inside with pride when they're just honest. I, I can't figure this out. I, I don't know what to do. Dad, wh what's your advice? C can you help me? Huh? Oh, listen, I wonder if I feel that way as a natural man. I wonder how my heavenly father feels when life crumbles in all around me. Huh? I wonder how he feels when I bow my chest out. And I said, that's all right, God, I got this. I got this. Like the Laodicean church, rich, increase with goods, have need of nothing. I'm okay, God. Huh? I've seen people in Pentecostal churches just that. They've got that spirit on them. They never struggle, never have any trial, never have any troubles. Come on now. I'm going to tell you, that's not reality. That's not the real world. And you don't have to confess it to me, but it'll do you good to confess it to God. It may be painful to discover. Amen. Instead of strength and fullness, praise God, there's come the consciousness that we are but as dead men and broken vessels. Come on now. That's where David was. That's what he's feeling like. And he brought his confession before God. He said, look here at me, Lord. I'm like like a dead man uh, who's forgotten out of mind. Uh, I'm like a broken vessel, something that's been discarded uh, and cast aside never to be used again. That's what I'm feeling like. Uh, but many times, listen, uh, when a man or a woman is brought to that place, uh, it's the first evidence uh, that the consecration they made to God uh, is real. Uh, it's genuine. Uh, God said of Job, uh, to the devil hast thou considered my servant Job 
Job. There's none like him in all the earth. Come on now. I'm telling you, Job was put to the test, but God took him through. Listen, you and I, we're not our own. Amen. We're not living. We're walking, talking dead men. We're crucified with Christ, and Christ is living within us. Praise God. Amen. And I'll tell you who he comes near, who he draws close to, those that have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. God requires perfect honesty of heart in confession and prayer in order to live the blessed life. Woo! Amen. I feel like I've been in revival, praise God. Hey, don't, look, everything's just not, I don't know if y'all talk like this down here. We say hunky-dory. Y'all ever heard that? Everything's not just hunky-dory in the Tig family. Come on now. I mean, we ain't just sitting around eating peaches and cream every day. Huh? Sometimes feels like we're eating sawdust or sand. Come on here. But we just keep putting one foot in front of the other, holding our head up, hollering hallelujah, making our confession before God in prayer, letting him know how weak and useless we are without him. Come on and help me. Let the man take heed when he thinks he stands, lest he falls. What the Bible said, I'm telling you, I want to remind God. I want him to understand that I understand how desperately I need him. And when I face trouble and calamity and trial, when I take it to the Lord in prayer, without pretense without putting a mask on without pretending to be something I'm not when I'll just dump it right out in front of him he's pleased with it brother James he's pleased with it praise God when his child comes to him and says look this is all I can handle this is all I can take amen I'm empty I'm like a dead man a broken vessel I need your help praise God amen when we get to feeling like that and we bring that confession before God that we can begin to petition Him to become our helper. I'm preaching about living the blessed life. Amen. We have to learn how to petition Him. Did you hear the psalmist in his song? He said, My times are in thy hands. Deliver me. Make thy face shine upon thy servant. Amen. Lord, this is not just life. Lord, this is not the devil. Lord, this is, this is, this is your will. This is your doing. He, he said that by saying, my times are in thy hands. Huh? He just laid down. Y'all ever uh, heard tell or seen them, them people? I, I believe it's probably psychologists people, psychiatrists people. I, I've heard tell of them, and seen little things about them gathering together in groups and they're trying to teach trust and they'll put one person with his back to another person and that, that they'll have them just fall just collapse in their arms and they have to trust the feller behind them to catch them anybody want to catch me here tonight I didn't think so amen uh if, if we're going to live the blessed life, that's the relationship we have to get with God. Just fall in His arms. Uh, my times are in thy hand. Come on, say amen. You're the one building this house. You're the one keeping this city, Lord. You're the fortress that I've run to. You're my rock. You're my high tower. You're my strength. You're my shield, my buckler. My confidence is in you. I've made my confession before you. Now I'm going to make my petition to you. Hallelujah. My times are in thy hands. But that's not enough. David didn't quit there. He pleaded, make thy face shine upon thy servant. Hallelujah. Having committed his spirit and his times into the hand of God, the psalmist now begins to plead or make petition for the face of God to shine down the 
upon him in his situation. Oh, the presence of the Lord. That makes all the difference, don't it? Amen. Whether you're walking through the cemetery burying a loved one or you're sitting on a, amen, on a, in a chair in an intensive care unit trying to comfort a dying sick loved one. Amen. Whether you're, amen, counting the money that you used to have that you just lost. Come on, say amen. No matter what you're facing, if you've been betrayed and turned on and talked about and abused and let down, come on now. Oh, the presence of the Lord had to make it all better if you can get somewhere and begin to petition Him and get His face to turn down to where you're at. Amen. Let His face shine upon you. Praise God. David understood. He knew that'll turn it all around. Praise God. That's what's going to make all the difference. If I can get Him to looking at me, everything's going to be all right. Praise God. The longing of every holy heart, every man, every woman of God that's struggling to live for God, striving to live for Christ. The longing of that heart revealed in Psalms 4 and 6. You know what it is? The light of His countenance. Make your face to shine upon me. The light of His countenance. Just to know God's looking at me. I ain't by myself. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to preach on. Makes you want to adore Him. When you make your petition to Him, it makes you begin to want to adore Him. Hallelujah. When's the last time y'all practiced that at Bethel? Just adoring Him. Did you hear what the, the psalmist said in verse 19 of the text? Oh, how great is thy goodness. Woo! When's the last time you just adored Him? Not for what He's done, but simply for who He is. Come on, say amen. Praise God. It's easy to pray, praise Him when He's paid your light bill. It's easy to adore Him when He's healed you and your body's not hurting anymore. Come on now. It's easy to adore Him when everything's going right and everything you're touching is turning to gold. Huh? Uh, when's the last time in the middle of your valley you just stopped and throwed your hands up and said, I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I adore you. I thank you for who you are and whose I am. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are God and I belong to you. Listen, those who are holy, yielded, those who are committed to God will find complete satisfaction. Amen. In the goodness of God. Amen. Listen, you get lost in His presence, caught up in adoration. You won't be slain laughing at him or questioning him or blaming the calamities of life upon him letting you down come on now I'm telling you but faith will take a hold in you listen one man said the ripest fruit of faith is adoration praise God I've been trusting you and it's working I've been living for you and you've been good to me I'm going to adore you praise God the goodness of God in his son Jesus is so great uh, that we must adore Him. Uh, praise God, we must uh, adore Him. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give the Lord a praise here, will you? Amen. I'm going to hurry along and quit. When I get to adoring Him, sometimes it starts out real quiet. I, I don't know how y'all do it, but... Uh, when I really get to praying, when, I, when it's just me and God and I really get to praying, a lot of times it's just like, I'm, like you hear me preaching. If you're standing outside somewhere, you'd think I was probably in the room preaching. I, 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 I just get, it's like cranking a chainsaw. Huh? And, and, but I'll tell you something. A lot of times it started out in a very low place. And I, I just began to adore him. Just begin to love on him for who he is. God, you're the one that sits on the circle of the earth. You created everything out of nothing. You spoke the worlds into existence. You stretched out the north over an empty place. 
You hanged the earth upon nothing. You called all the stars by name when you set them in their silvery sockets in heaven. You created light before you created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Just by speaking, God, I love you. I praise you. I adore you. You've been good to me. You've blessed me. But more than the blessings you've blessed me with, you are God. And you are worthy of adoration. And if I'll do that a little while, listen, without fail, if I'll do that a little while, sometimes it takes longer than others. But if I'll do it for a little while, that adoration, amen. You know what it's like? Trying to get that saw cranked. Any of you brothers ever had a stubborn chainsaw? I wore my arm out on weed eaters. Come on here. Trying to get them cranked. Amen. But if it ever cranks off and gets to going, come on here. Adoration will turn into praise. Come on now. And I find myself getting louder and louder and louder and louder. Come on now. One man said years ago, you know something, preacher? God's not deaf. You know what the preacher told him? He ain't nervous either. Hallelujah. He ain't nervous. He likes to hear us praise him. He likes to hear us lift up our voice. The psalmist did it in verse 21. Blessed be the Lord, for he has showed me his marvelous kindness. He began to praise him. Praise God. My tongue could never express the goodness of God or the overwhelming sense of God's mercy and grace that he's bestowed upon me. But though my tongue could never tell it all, I cannot keep it quiet. I cannot stay silent. Amen. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless him his holy name. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Praise God. We ought to praise him as the psalmist said for his marvelous kindness. Praise God. When we are living the blessed life not only will that adoration turn into praise Amen, that praise will turn into exhortation. In verses 23 and 24, and I'm I'm stopping here. This is my conclusion. David said, Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints. Be of good courage. (laughs) Woo! Just a few verses back, he's facing nets, lying tongues, Lying vanities. Just a few verses ago, he's as a dead man, forgotten and out of mind. He's like a broken vessel. huh? But now, he's prayed all the way through. And down at the end of his song, he's exhorting those people around him. Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, be of good courage. Praise God. Maybe he's encouraging his own soul. Oh, love the Lord. All ye his saints, be of good courage. Hallelujah. Amen. He's never quit me. He's never let me down. He's never forsaken me. Never turned and walked away from me. Come on now. I've got to tell somebody he'll do to trust. He'll do to worship. He'll do to walk with. He'll do to die with. Come on, say amen. The heart that is full of the goodness of God will long to tell somebody else. Love him. Worship him. Live for him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Love the Lord. Amen. Love the Lord, church, and let that love you have for him help you to lead others. Praise God to have courage to serve him, to live for him. Praise God. And he will strengthen your heart. Praise God. The blessed life, if we're going to live the blessed life, part of it has to be exhortation. We have to spend time telling others about how good God is. we got to find somebody to talk to about the love of God. I wrote it down. The blessed life is a life of faith in God for ourselves and of faith in His gospel for others. Amen. I don't look like much to the world, I understand. I'm not driving the 
most expensive automobile or living in a big house up on the hill. And uh, I, don't, uh, I, I don't own stock in Microsoft or uh, Amazon or Google. Come on here. I'm not a, a Silicon Valley a billionaire. Huh? And uh, maybe just a few people scattered around planet Earth will ever even hear the name Curtis Teague. But that's all right with me. I'm living the blessed life. Hallelujah. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I said I'm living the blessed life. Oh, why don't you stand to your feet and lift both your hands. Thank Him if you're living the blessed life. You ought to praise Him. You ought to adore Him. You ought to worship Him. You ought to love on Him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. You can put your confidence in Him. You can commit yourself to Him. Make your confession before Him when you're feeling weak. Make your petition. Hey, Amen. Plead with Him for His face to shine upon you. Begin to adore Him. Begin to praise Him. And then find somebody to exhort to love Him just like you've been loving Him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Living the blessed life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Listen. They've tried to convince us God doesn't even exist. Exists. They've tried to convince us the Bible's just another old book from a Middle Eastern religion from an ancient time. But thank God I was there when it happened in an altar of prayer. When old things passed away and all things became new. Praise God. I'm living a blessed life. Hallelujah. I'm not who I used to be. Praise God. Don't want to be who I used to be. Thank God He's blessed me. He's kept Help me. He's helped me. You ought to praise him, church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise him for blessing you. Praise him for keeping you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 I believe you're blessed, brother. I believe you're blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, he probably not the richest man here. I see him struggling sometimes just to get through the door. And, get, and I say that with uh, 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 humility. Uh, he's, not, he's, he's not near as young as I am. Come on, say amen. Uh, oh, but when he straps that guitar on and he puts that big pick in his hand, uh, hey man, he's got the look of a blessed man upon his face. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Anna, I can see it all over your countenance. Every time I go sit behind you, every time I show up, glory to God. Uh, hey man, your countenance says I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's others here tonight. Amen. You can see it glowing on you. Praise God. Brother Eugene Watson. I don't know him very well. Amen. But when he gets stirred up and he gets a chainsaw cranked, he'll get to screaming and get red in the face. It's almost more than he can handle. And my mind says blessed. He He's blessed. That's the blessed life. Hallelujah. How about you? Are you living that blessed life? Amen. I've uh, watched that sister right yonder. Amen. Loved ones, family members, quit, give up, turn back. Folks we never thought would. Huh? Now I've watched her be faithful. Pray for her husband. Come on now. Keep on coming to the house of God. Huh? And sometimes look look at her countenance right now. She don't look down and out to me. Come on, say amen. Oh, shut up, Mokola Bahia. She looks blessed, glory to God. Looks like somebody, amen, under the blessings of God. Hallelujah. Praise his name, somebody. Come on and praise him. Come on and glorify him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ha. Woo. Thank God. Hallelujah. How about this? Maybe you're here and you need a good blessing. Maybe you're here and you need a good stirring. Maybe you're here and you just need the face of God to turn to you and shine. His countenance just to shine down on you. Amen. Come on, let's gather in.